so this is the design we will be working on today. This is the finished version. As you can see, we have some functionality on these menu items. Yeah. Yes, as soon as I finish it. Uh, depending on which items you select, you have to change this, this bar here and also the content there at the bottom. Uh, then on the mobile version, this will be kind of the tablet version here, something around here. And then for the mobile version, we just hide the menu, we prevent those calls from floating, and we add some final functionality to this hamburger menu, meaning namely displaying these Lee items here. As you can see, we changed the selected bar from, from the bottom to the right part of the elements, as you can see here. And that's pretty much it, okay? So let's jump right into it. First, let's review a little bit of the code. Uh, uh, okay, so we start with this, it's letter, what we said, letter D. So I will be working on with this one. Let me zoom a little bit. This is a code, as you can see we have some sections there, I will collapse them just for a moment. So this is one section, another section, one more section and the last one I think. Okay, so this is the whole code for the test, let me pause it for a minute. Sorry, could you please open the door Mariano? Thanks. Uh, if if you go to the CSS, let me save this as temp to delete it later. Okay, thank you. So I will collapse my sections again, sorry about that. Just to make this shorter. This is the last one, okay? So this is HTML, if you inspect this, the CSS, which is letter D, CSS, D, D, this one. Okay, I will be working on this a little bit. Uh, and as you can see here, we are hiding all the sections, okay? Let me just move this a little bit and the temp. So we have many sections there, and we are hiding, hiding, hiding them all together, and then we are just showing the first one, okay? The one with home. If we remove this, we will be able to, it's this temp, 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 this one. We will be able to show all the sections stacked up together, right? So what this text, is, what this piece of code is doing, this CSS is hiding all the sections, and then we, we just show the first one. If we remove this one, of course, we won't be able to see any section at all, okay? So let's start with, linking those menu navigation to and making them showing the correct sections as needed, okay? And I did give you a hint here with the data sec, trying to give you a hint of how could you relate those Lee elements with the sections, okay? And as you can see, the data sec is the same uh, as the ID of each of the sections, okay? So there's a way you can link them by retrieving the data set from the click at Lee element and showing that respective section. You must add the hashtag symbol to make it an ID selector. Yeah. It was necessary to use the data section. No, no, no. There, there are other ways you can achieve that, okay? So it's not mandatory that you use the data set, but it helps you to write less code uh, you could add some IDs to this and check the, the click on any of those items, but then you will have like the same code four times. So I, I will try to write as less code as possible to make it more easy to, to remember and to read later on, okay? So first, uh, uh, we need to check if we have jQuery. We also have it. I include it for you so you don't have to include it yourself. So first, let's try to get the click Let's add an event listener on these Lee items and actually read the fire the click event on any of them, okay? So before closing the body tag, I will write some script here. How do we get 
the yeah, click on these click. ones. Click. Yeah, we, we, as they are the only list out there, we can just select them like this. You could use header li, header ule, it, it will work the same. On click event, execute something, right? As always, let's try this out before doing anything else. Just by printing something on the console, yes, it works. I know it works, but let's check it out anyway, okay? So I just save this, refresh this, open the console. We'll zoom it out a little bit, zoom it in, sorry. And then as soon as I click on any of these, I get this text, yes, it works, okay? So it's working, at least the clicking event. Of course, I don't want to print anything on the console. So what you can do is retrieve this piece of code, this variable, from the clickedly. How do you get that? So how do you know which lead you clicked? You can inspect that by selecting the this keyword. This will uh, point to the clickedly, okay? And then these are called data values, right? This is mandatory if you want to add a data value on any tag item. You just write data hyphen. This is mandatory, but this is free for you to choose. This is the name of the variable. I, choose, I chose sec, but you can type whatever you want here. No spaces, no strange symbols. You know the ID rules, okay? So this dot data, and then here is sec. This will retrieve either of these strings here, okay? Let's print that on the console to check that out. So console log. Okay, so I'm just printing this. And if I check that, if I click home, sorry, you do get the home text, products, get products, services, get services, and company, prints company, okay? So I'm just retrieving these strings from here, okay? Uh, I will do this in two steps. So I will assign this into a variable that I will name S. You can name that whatever you want. And then we are going to use that as a selector. Okay, uh, you could, if you need to, you can concatenate the hashtag symbol just by, by doing so. This is a, a simple concatenation, okay? Now, in the S variable, we have a string that always starts with a hashtag followed by one of these texts here, right? Why would we need the hashtag? Because we want to use this later on as a selector. Because if we click this one, we want to show this section, right? And to show this section, we have to select it using its ID, which is services. But as services is an ID, you need to type the hashtag before. So you need, at some point, you will need this hashtag. You can add this later on when you actually write the selector. You could also write it here if you want to. You can add it here, and then you don't have to concatenate it anymore. Okay? There are several ways you can you can insert or incorporate that hashtag symbol when you need to, okay? Now, first, what we should do is something like, it doesn't matter which menu item the user clicks on, we, the way we are going to, to make it work is hide all the sections, that way we are going to hide for sure the section that was being shown up to then, and then we just wanna show the selected section, okay? So how do we hide all the sections? Section. You select the tag name section, right? Hide. And then hide, yeah. So uh, you will need to, if you click on any of these, what you are actually doing is hide all the sections altogether, okay? That's okay. That's the first step. So hide all the sections. These will hide well, you get the idea. This will hide the, the section that was being showed up to then, okay? And then we want to show the selected section, okay? The one that we have here on this variable, right? So now we use that as a selector. This already has, has a hashtag because we have the hashtag here. So there are at least three ways we can incorporate that hashtag. If we don't, if we don't have it here, we already saw that you could add it here, concatenate it here, right? Or you can even concatenate it when you use it as a selector, so here, right? 
what we are doing on on the three on either of these three ways we are concatenating or prepending that hashtag before the, the name of the uh, before the string we got out of the Lee element okay I don't know which one do you prefer personally I prefer this one okay uh, and then we show it right so just with a show it will work so with this done we can show products or services or company of the first one okay uh, we then want to add some transition effect, namely a fading effect. So instead of just hiding the elements, we are going to fade them out, okay? So if you add a fade out here, you will fade out that one or that one, and then you are showing that one, okay? Instead of just showing it, we wanna fade it in, right? The problem right now is that maybe you would expect some kind of a cross fading effect, some section fading out and the other section fading in. But it doesn't work like that. And what you end up with is the fade out does work. But then at the end, as the fading was taking place, while the fade out was also taking place, what you see is actually the final result of the fading. Okay? So you don't get that fading in effect. Just when you, when you click on the same button, yeah, for sure. But when you click on a different one, it just pops, up, pops in, right? So what we could do is, before fading in, just wait for this fade out effect to complete. The average time or the default time these effects uh, take are 400 milliseconds. And I wrote on the Blackboard the delay uh, method that you can use on jQuery to add some delay to the events. And if you have never used the delay, you can always goggle it, jQuery delay, and look for the API. And then you will see that the delay sets a timer to delay the execution, just what we want. And then you will read or learn how to use it, okay? This is called event chaining. Because as you can see, it works like a chain of events that are chained with the dot symbol, okay? So you can chain many events to, to happen one after another, right? So what we want to do is, before fading in, we want to wait a little bit, right? So let's add a delay of, let's say, 400 milliseconds. And then we fade in the other sections. And with that done, oh, sorry. With that done, we now get this nice effect. Fading out and fading in. OK? So now it's starting to look OK. The other thing we need to change is this selected class, OK? If you inspect the code, you will see that there's a class selected which actually adds this border top, this red border top, okay? So what we need to do is assign that selected class to the selected or to the clickedly element, okay? So again, what we do is, and you can merge this and this line of code in the same one if you want to write even less code, because we don't really need this S variable. We could just copy this code and paste it here, right? And then we don't need this piece of code anymore. We are selecting, retrieving the data set value from the Lee element, and then using that as a selector. Yes, the result is the same. As you can see, no changes. I will just leave this in two steps so you can read it easier later on if you are using this for studying. And then what we want to do is remove the class selected from all of the Lee elements, okay? So select the Lee elements and remove the class selected, okay? So no matter which Lee I click, it will first remove the class selected from all of them. Since this one is the only one that has it, if I click on any of them, even on the same one, what I will do is just remove that class selected that removes the, that red border top, okay? And then what I need to do is add the selected class, selected class to the clickedly, right? So how do we get the clickedly with this? 
Yeah, but how do we know which league we clicked on? We can use the this selector, okay? Then uh, class select, and that's it, okay? So now if I click on products, products has this class, and if I click on company, company has this cl that class, and so on. So the first part is more or less complete, okay? Any questions up to now? No? Okay? How many lines of code have we written? Maybe six or seven, so not much, right? Uh, okay, so let's move to the next part. The next part is the responsive part, and we also will need, again, some jQuery to add the functionality to the hamburger menu. But first, we need to show it, okay? So as you can see, this wrapper, if you inspect the CSS, this wrapper or the main wrapper is 1120 pixels wide, meaning that if I see this on a screen smaller than 120, I will start having my horizontal scrolling. That's the reason I set my first breakpoint at 1120, okay? Because I know that if I am opening that design on a browser or a display narrower than 1120, I should make some change in order to get rid of that horizontal scroll bar that I used to have, okay? So what do you do? Well, you need to add responsiveness to the page. And for adding responsiveness, we said we need mainly two components. We need the meta viewport. What's the meta viewport for? That was a question in the theory part of the test. For the screen, the amount of the size. Yeah, what the meta viewport can help us to accomplish is to actually prevent the browser from zooming out the web page. Okay. So now this website doesn't have any viewport inserted. And if I inspect it using the console, you can see that we are actually zooming out the whole web page if we will open this on a mobile device. Okay? And we don't want that to happen. So the first thing we need to add to prevent that from happening is adding the meta viewport. Okay? Where do we add that? On the HTML, on the head, before the styles. So here. Okay? Uh, who knows the meta viewport by heart? Do you? Me neither. I, I've been writing web pages for more than 10 years and I still haven't memorized it yet, but I don't need to, and you don't need to either, because you can always go to and Google it and copy and paste it, so there's no problem at all, okay? So just Google meta viewport, grab it from anywhere, and just copy it and paste it, and that's it, okay? The important thing is this one that will prevent the browser from zooming out this. So if I just save this and refresh it, this shouldn't uh, zoom anymore. But right now I am still reading a cache version of that page. So there are two tricks you can try it out. Erase the cache for the browser. Try to refresh the web page erasing the cache by clicking Command-Shift-R. If this doesn't work, what you can also try is try to open this on an incognito window, okay? If I do that, I, I am sure I'm not bringing any cache version of the CSS, and then you can see that we are not zooming the page anymore with that meta viewport, okay? So right now we are displaying the web page at what? 100%, meaning we are just seeing the top left part of the screen with our cell phone, okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So let's move back here. Uh, we now have the meta viewport. And the next thing to do to add responsiveness or to adapt the layout of the page to the corresponding device is to use some media queries, okay? So let's move to the CSS. And here at the bottom, I will start adding my responsiveness. So responsive. So the first break should occur on devices of up to 1120 pixels wide, okay? So what media? You could buy a screen. We don't really need to because we can work with the default value, which is all, okay? And then max with 1120 pixels. So on any device up to 1120, we should use these rules here. What we want to change? Well. We want to change the wrapper, so we want to override that rule by 
been as specific as we were when we created it. And we want to change this 1120. And what value should we write? We don't longer want to fix it with on that container. We want a fluid uh, size. So probably 100%, 100 view per width, or VW would also work. OK? So wrapper with 100 view per width can work, OK? So as you can see, as soon as we click less than 1120, so exactly here, the wrapper will start to adapt at 100% of the view per width, OK? And we no longer have this horizontal scroll bar no more, OK? Yeah, it can. It, this will be the same. What's the difference? The percentage is the is a, uh, related to the parent of the container. Okay, so this will use 100% of the parent container of the wrapper. As the parent container of the wrapper is the body, then it's actually the same to write view per width. If this wrapper were to be inside another container with a width of 400 pixels, and we set this to 100% the size will be 400 pixels. But if we set this to 100 view per width, even if the wrapper was inside a container of 400 pixels, the size of the wrapper will be the size of the full viewport. OK? That's the difference between those two measures. OK? In this case, it's really the same if we use one or the other one. OK? So if you just, just percentage, the result is actually the same. OK? And I think that was the only change you need to make for tablets. And that's it. We don't need to write anything else because in tablet view, if we inspect this on a tablet, you will see that, yeah, here is not working. But if you check that on a tablet, for example, it's starting to look, well, let me zoom that in a little bit. It's starting to look OK. And we don't have any horizontal scrolling. OK? So that's good for now. Now let's move to the mobile. I set the mobile view to fire at 770. Why? Because I saw that more or less, check this number here, more or less roughly at 670 or values less than that, I will start to have this overlap between the logo and the Lee element. Okay? So I know I have to start changing things somewhere around here. Okay? So I got that 670 value out of that. Uh, uh, measure that I'm playing with right now, OK? So we need another media query. This will be the mobile version, right? So media max with 670 pixels, OK? And here we do have to change many things, OK? First of all, what we need to do is just hide this menu altogether, OK? So this is a UL. Remember, it's this one. OK, so let's hide it out. Uh, first of all, how did we use it? We want to be as specific as we were when we defined the values of those elements. OK, so if I select header UL, I want to be as specific. OK, so header UL, how do you hide it? Display none. OK, so as you can see, as soon as I hit 670 pixels, I will be hiding that UL altogether, OK? Now we want to prevent those divs from floating, and we want to display them stacked, OK? These divs are inside the sections, but all of them have this class call, OK? So this one will be this one, and this is the other one. So as you can see, both of them has the class call. And this one also has a class called 1, and this one has called 2. Why? Because with the call class, I am floating them. And then call 1 is setting the width of this first column to be wider than the other one. OK? And call 2 is set to 40 pixels, 40 uh, percent. OK? So I don't want them to float. So I can copy this, copy this, paste it here, and say float none, right? So this will prevent those columns from floating. As you can see, they are not floating anymore. Now the sizes look weird because this is still 60% and this is still 40%. Okay? So I also need to change that 
for call one and also for call two, right? The width should be what? Maybe 100%. The problem here is that yeah, it will be flush to the sides of the window. We probably want to have a small amount of space at the right and left side of the design because that helps the user read better the text and that kind of stuff. So we could do something like, yeah, maybe 90%. And then we want to center this all together, right? How do we center this? Margin zero auto, okay? And that will center the stuff, okay? Now, how, mu how much space do we have here and here? 5% on each side, right? Because the width is 90%. That means as this keeps getting smaller, the size of the space here will also be smaller, right? I don't know if you can see that. Let's try to remove this for a, just remove the center a line of this text just for a second. So that's inside. It should be at center. I think it's one third. I don't know if it's this one. No. Well, let's just check it here, right? So is this cast desk and this one says. What? So it's, yeah, it's center, right? So we should have something to center this text align center or a P center. This one is center, but why are we, why is this text center? Uh, here I'm not centering at all. Uh, oh, here, call one text align center. So if we remove this, uh, We'll just remove it all together. You will see what I mean. Okay, look at the space here. As the screen grows narrower, also the space is more narrow here because it's a percentage of the width of the screen, right? And if, as this grows bigger, I don't know if you can see it, but the space here also grows bigger, right? Do, can you see it? So here's a question. How could we, let's just remove that for a second, this call one text align center, okay? How could we give this a fixed width, okay? So, uh, Mariano, can you help me with the door again, sorry? So, for example, the standard size that you will find on, on most of the web designs is 16 pixels on each side, okay? So, how would you add that here? You want these columns to be of flexible width, right? But you have you want to have fixed spaces on the left and part and right side of these columns. You use a padding, but the problem is that if you use a fixed padding, then how do you get this value, this this flexible or this variable value with the percentage? Because the size of this, let me select it here and show it here for you. Right now is 522, but if I put this, make this smaller, now it's 387, right? So if you put a fixed padding size of 16 on each side, then you will also need to uh, rewrite or that the value of that paragraph, right, of that container. One one nice way of doing it is making some calculations. So what you could do is use the calc to make some calculations inside CSS. And what you want to do, you want the size of that item to be 100%, and you want to subtract 16 pixels on the right and 16 pixels on the left. So you want to subtract 32 pixels out of 100 of the width of that container, right? And you can do that with the calculation. So you can write something like 100% pixel, uh, percent minus 32 pixels, okay? And that way, look at the size. The size won't change anymore. I don't know if you can see it, but this size, this padding is constant right now, okay? Uh, you can use any calculation you want in the calc, subtraction, division, multiplication, um, addition. Just make sure you leave some white spaces between each side of the operands. Otherwise, the CSS won't recognize this as an operation. So if you remove the spaces, even on just one of them, 
then this won't work anymore, okay? And as you can see, we have this at 40% size again, okay? So these, these white spaces between each side of the operand are important to make any calculation, okay? So now it's working quite okay. We are hiding this menu. We are preventing this from floating. So this will look quite well on any mobile phone out there. So something like the iPhone 5. We don't have any horizontal scrolling and we are able to, to watch everything quite nice, okay? So that's it for at least for this part. Now let's play with the top. We want to show the hamburger menu just on mobile. So just when we hide that UL, we do want to show the hamburger menu, right? But wait, we don't have any hamburger menu here because I deleted it. I deleted it, okay? So you need to add it somewhere inside the header, okay? Where? Well, it's really, it, it really doesn't mind because we are going to put it, position it at the right side of the header later on with a, maybe with a position absolute or something like that. That will work. I will add it here. So image source, image D, hamburger menu. Uh, it's not there yet. I forgot to put it, right? On the image D. So let me just copy it from anywhere there. Image D. That's why I was getting different hamburger menus design on this kind of thing. It doesn't really matter. It's okay. You can. I grab, I normally, I usually grab those from iconfinder.com because it's a royalty free site. Then just look for menu or hamburger menu, look for the free ones, and you have many styles there that you can use. These are all high quality icons. You can download SVGs, PNG with transparency in huge sizes, and they are royalty free. So it's a good page to, to search for icons. Okay? So I have this one right now. Let's add it here hamburger menu, and I will give it an ID of menu to play with jQuery and to be able to select it and add an event listener to it and that kind of stuff, okay? So, menu. Uh, now the problem is that this menu will be displayed all the time, right? Doesn't matter which layout you have. So we have to first uh, show it well on the mobile view and then hide it all together, okay? On this view, okay? So first of all, I will put it on the correct position just on the mobile view. So let's go to the CSS. And before the responsiveness, you could select the menu, change its width to, let's say, 40 pixels. So now it's uh, maybe a little bit more. There's a standard, more or less, around 40 pixels. is the limit of the size, the width and height of a button, if you want to make it easier, easy to click for people with fat fingers, okay? So if you write something like, let's say 20 pixels, now this is too short, too small, and maybe people with fat fingers will have troubles on clicking it. So around 40 pixels is the, the desired minimum size for a, for a button or a click clickable element, right? Let's write, yeah, 40 pixels, okay? So maybe a little bit more, 46, okay? Now I want this to be right here. As the container already has, the container is a header, right? And as the container already has a position relative, I can play with a position absolute within that container and flush it to the right side of the container, right? So let's do that here with a position absolute. If I write right zero, then it will be flushed to the right of the container. Yeah, can you see it? I want to add some top. Let's say 10 pixels. Maybe if I'm picky and I do, I want to center it. Maybe somewhere around there, it's okay. And then I also want to give some space to the right. And that's quite okay. Okay? So it's flush to the right. I don't want to display it on tablet or mobile or desktop, sorry. I just want to display it on mobile. Okay? So I should hide it on, on these views. Okay? And just show it on this one. So I will hide it all together display none and then just on mobile which is this media query I will show it so menu display block okay so it's hidden there right but I'm able to show it just when I hide the menu I show the the hamburger menu icon 
Okay, does that make sense? Okay, now let's add some functionality to it. We want to be able to click on it and toggle the, the, the view of the menu based on that click event, okay? So we need to write that on jQuery. So look for something with the ID menu and add the event listener click to it and whenever you click on it, execute this function. And again, I should see if this works. Yes, this works. I know, but I just want to double check it, okay? So if I click on it, I get this, yes, it works, this works text, okay? So now I can erase this console log because I know that event is correctly being fired, okay? Uh, what do you want to do? Well, which element I, I hide in mobile? The header UL, right? So this is the one I want to show or switch or, or, or toggle its view whenever I click the hamburger menu, right? So you go here, look for the UL, and yeah, you can write show. The problem is that this will show the menu, but you are not able to hide it anymore. Okay. If you write toggle, this will change from hidden to, to visible, okay? Back and forth. So I'm able to show it and hide it. Yeah, that works. But I want to add a nice effect to that. So slide toggle. And this will show it or hide it with a nice sliding effect. Okay? And that's all for the jQuery part of the test. How many lines of code did I write? Maybe 10 more or less, okay, with all the comments and all that. And that's it for the jQuery part. We don't need anything else for the jQuery section because these ones already work, and this one is hiding or showing the menu. So the last part we need to do is just change the way this menu is being displayed on mobile devices, okay? And this is not as easy as it looks like. We have to change many things on this, this wrapper because of the way I initially designed these elements. These Lee elements, are being centered, or this UL is being centered with a position absolute and, and a translation on the transform, <coughs> sorry, property here, right? So probably this wasn't the, the best way to center this UL, probably not, and now I have to deal with it and change it somehow, okay? Either change the way I position it at the first place, or overriding these rules when I wanted to show that UL on a different way or a different position, right? Let's do that uh, step by step, okay? So one of the problems is, okay, I want to change this UL. This UL has a position absolute. Let me copy all, all this. I will just copy this because I want to rewrite that rule on my CSS, right? So somewhere here. So I no longer want a position absolute. I want a position relative. I don't want to write zero or a top 50% or a transform. The transform is easy to remove with a transform none. But how do we remove these values? Yeah, you can. It's you. You cannot remove it by typing, for example, write none or anything like that. So you need to some somehow reset them. Okay. How do you reset them? You can change their value either to inherit, okay? What inherit does, it will try to inherit the value from the parent container of that element. So who's the parent from the UL? The header. And as the header doesn't have any right attribute, it will be the same as resetting it, okay? So you can always use the inherit to kind of remove or reset a specific value on a CSS rule, okay? So right now, if you check that out, we now have that in relative position. Then, we don't want these Lee elements to be horizontal, we want it to be a stack, vertically stacked. The way we did it was with this display in line block. So we wanna move that out. Let me copy that rule. So instead of inline block, we could use just a normal block, right? So we did with that done, we now have those menus there, okay? But now we have another problem. As you can see, the header, which is this big box here, 
is not growing as needed, right? Why not? Because it has a fixed height of 80 pixels, right? We need to somehow give the freedom to that header to grow or shrink as needed depending on the elements it's, it's displaying inside it, okay? You get the idea? So we have this header height. We don't want that anymore. So how do we reset this value? Okay. Yeah, inherit. The problem is that as we have just floating elements inside that and stuff, now the size of the header is the height of the header, I don't know if you can see it, but it's zero, okay? Because inside the header, we have this one which has a position absolute, so it doesn't take that into account when calculating the vertical height of the element. We then have a UL. This does have a position relative, but as it's not been shown, it's also not important. And then we have this image, and this also has a position absolute, okay? Now, if we do this, we, we do see that the header is now growing, right? So we want this, but we want to have a mean height, a minimum height of 80 pixels, okay? So this will assign an initial height of 80 pixels, but it will allow it to grow if it needs to, okay? Now, the other problem is how we center this logo. We center it vertically using this position absolute and the translate Y and stuff. So we also don't want that to happen because we want this to be fixed more or less here at the top of the, of the page, right? So let me copy all that. We need to change that out. So position absolute, yeah, it, it can still be a position absolute, so we don't need to move that. We don't want to transform it, so none. The left, we can leave it at 40. And the top, instead of 50%, let's try to, I don't know, 20 pixels. And as you can see, it's not the correct top value because you can see that logo jumping out there. So we should increase a little bit that value, okay? So let's try it at 28. Uh, it's still a little bit on the top side, so maybe 31, no, 34. Yeah, now it's kind of working, right? You cannot see that logo moving at all. Although we are changing its properties, right? But now if I click here, this is not moving at all and we are on the right track, okay? What else do we need? We need that UL to clear the space on the top, okay? So the UL, this one, should have maybe a padding top of, let's say, 80 pixels, because that's the mean height of the header, right? So we want to clear that space. So now we do have that space clear. And we want this to grow, because these Lee elements right now have a fixed width of 120 pixels. We don't want that. So the Lee should have a width of, let's think, 100%, okay? So now these are using the whole space. It's starting to look okay. Now we want to move this bar from the top to the right side of the Lee elements, right? So this is the selected class, remember? We have this selected class here, and this selected class has a top border. We also want to change that, right? So we just copy this, paste it there. We don't want to change the color, but we don't want any top border. So I will duplicate this because we want now a right border, right? And the top border, how do we get rid of it? None. Okay? Does that make sense? Now the problem is that we do have that, but we have a small horizontal scrolling. Why? Exactly, because this is 100% wide plus 5 pixels on the right side. So we could always use our calculations on here, remember? Cal this minus 5 pixels, right? 
So now the space is actually perfect because no matter the size of this, we are changing the width of these Lie elements to be 100% of the container minus 5 pixels. We are accounting for that right border right now. Okay? So this works quite okay. And I think that's pretty much it, right? I'm not missing anything. One last thing I will add to this design to make it more user-friendly. I don't know if you can check that, but actually, if you will run a think aloud text or any of our evaluation techniques, and you will observe how the users interact with this website, you will see that they click here, and they select something, and most of them will again click here just to hide this. Okay? So how could we actually help the users to spare that click, that double click on the, on the hamburger menu? You could hide the menu as soon as they click on any of these elements, right? So the hiding of that, of that menu is this one, right? So you can copy that and also trigger that whenever you click on any Lee element, right? So I will just copy that and put it there. So now, if you click anywhere here, you will also hide the menu. But what I don't like is that it happens too fast, and maybe I do want to wait a little bit for that bar to, to give the user time to see that that red bar is now on that section, right? Because right now it happens too quickly, right? It happens too fast. So what can you add here to make it wait a little bit? Yeah, you can add a nice delay of, let's say, 300 milliseconds. And now if I click here, that's kind of better, right? Because the user sees that that's changing. This is changing. And now it's hiding the, the menu altogether. OK? Uh, I will stop the video here.